Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So in this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to look at the breakdowns of any ads that you've been running. This is one of the biggest pitfalls and reasons why I see people failing when it comes to marketing is that, that they don't understand how to look at the information, or how to look at the data and look at the breakdowns. What this will allow you to do is if you've been running ads up to this point and it hasn't worked out, you may be thinking the product is the issue, the creative is the issue, your store is the issue. It could be any of those things when in reality you might just need to delve a little bit deeper into the data and uncover the best areas or the best demographics to target. If you're not aware of what I'm about to show you today in this video, it can literally transform the results of your ads overnight and it can be the difference between success and failure. What most beginners tend to do is they'll build a store, chuck some products on it, run some ads and when they don't see the purchases come in, after spending maybe $50, they think it doesn't work. When in reality, what they need to do is spend that money again, but in the right places, and they need to identify what those right places are. And that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. What I'm also gonna show you too, kind of like a side spin off of what I'm gonna show you is how to test something properly. This is the number one reason I would say why people fail is because they keep repeating the same test after test after product after product. And if your testing strategy isn't right and you don't understand how to look at the data or what sort of data you're looking for, it doesn't matter whether you test one product, 20 products, 100 products. If your testing strategy isn't on point, you will never succeed. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video, okay? So I've got a campaign here. Um, some decent results from Gen 6 of all of this year, um, 1,800 purchases and an average cost per purchase of just under $30. The first thing you need to do is click this breakdown button here. If you're experienced with Facebook ads or marketing, then you probably know how to do this. If you don't know how to do this, this will make a significant difference. And the reason why is because you have access to all these different breakdowns and Facebook will show you where it's spending your money and also on the flip side of that, where you're getting the best response from. And this is really, really important. So if we have a look at age, what we can see is down the left hand side, so I'll just make myself a little bit smaller. We can see it gives us all of the different age brackets. So we have 18 to 24, 25 to 34, 35 to 44, so on and so forth. And inside each of these brackets, it then breaks down the data as well. So we can see the cost per result look. So what you can see here is from this particular campaign, 18 to 24 year olds are costing me 94.62 per purchase, whereas 65 plus year olds are giving me $28 per purchase. I've spent $380 on 18 to 24 year olds, which is wasted. So to some degree, Facebook will do a decent job of putting your money in the right places, but not always. I strongly urge you to go and do this inside your ad account because I've had ad sets and campaigns in the past where Facebook will spend the majority of my budget on age ranges or the other breakdowns I'm gonna show you in completely the wrong areas. If you don't have purchase data to go on, i.e. you've got smaller budgets and you're just running the initial tests, then in my opinion, the three numbers you need to be looking at are impressions, CPC link click, and CTR link click through rate. Your link click through rate is a direct reflection of how interested your audience is in the products and creative that you're running. A higher click through rate, the more interested they are, and therefore the more money you should spend on them. What we can see here quite clearly, in fact, this is quite a good example actually, is as the audience gets older look, so does the interest increases. So what this is telling me is that the more money I put into an older generation here, the better return on my money I'm going to get. So that's what you need to do. If you've tested products up to this point and they haven't worked out, you need to go back into your ad account, you need to have a look at the different age ranges because what you might find is that lots and lots of money or the majority of your budget has been spent on these younger generations that are getting a really poor CTR, but then the older generation is getting a really high CTR, but Facebook might have spent say 70% of your budget on age ranges that aren't interested in your product. So what you would do in that case is you would duplicate the ad set and remove the younger generation or remove the younger audiences, forcing Facebook to spend 100% of your budget then in the correct places. The reason why impressions are so important then, and this is where most people fall offshore with their testing strategy, is that if you've only spent say $20, $30, some of these age ranges will only have maybe 20, 30, maybe 100 impressions that's not a significant, I'm going to say bigger here because this is super, super important. That is not a significant portion <clears throat> of your audience to have a proper understanding of whether it's going to work or not. When you select audiences on Facebook, you're targeting millions and millions and millions of people. If your ads have only reached a thousand, you're talking 0.0001% of the overall audience as a whole. And that is not an accurate representation of that audience as a whole. Think of it, if you were to go into your local high street, 
um, with a product in your hand and ask one person whether they wanted to buy that product and they said no. Instead of asking other people, if you just went home and just assumed nobody in that town wanted to buy your product, asking that one person, that one person doesn't represent that whole town. They don't speak for the whole town. And that's essentially what you're doing with your testing strategy. If only one of these age ranges has 50 impressions, that's not an accurate representation of that age range as a whole. And Facebook will not split it evenly too. So what you need to do, in some cases, if there's size of potential, i.e. a good CTR, a good CPC, then you need to single out the age ranges and make sure they get enough spend. In my opinion, I recommend trying to get the impressions of each age range up to at least 500 as a minimum. So instead of testing, say, 10 ad sets, bring it down to just one if you have to and make sure you spend enough money in the right places. The other thing you can do too <clears throat> is gender. I don't usually split out gender because if we have a look at my acquisition costs, we can see that between male and female is pretty identical for this particular and ad account, um, but again, depending on what your product is, it may be completely differently. You may be finding that females are responding so much better, and that's where the interest is coming from, and yet Facebook is spending the majority of your budget on males. So it's really, really, really important that you look at the breakdowns to make sure that most of your budget isn't getting wasted in the wrong areas. The other thing that you can look at as well, too, is if you come into breakdowns, age and gender is typically where I would start. Country is obviously super, super important as well. You can do the same thing. Most people as well, what they fail to understand is that when you're running tests, if you've spent $50 across five different countries, you're talking hundreds of millions of people potentially, and you've only spent $50, you're probably only going to reach two, three thousand 3,000 people in an audience size of maybe 100 million. It's not an accurate representation. So you have to look at your breakdowns. You have to give each of these breakdowns adequate spend to get a decent understanding of who's actually most interested in your product. And when you identify what that age range is, what that gender is, what that country is, that is when you then take that ad set or you take that customer profile into an ad set and you scale it. And that is when you double down and make sure you port the majority of your budget in the places that you know for sure are working. If you didn't know you could do this, what I want you to do is leave a comment down below and say that you didn't know you could do this. Plug it into your ad account, go and look at your breakdowns and you'll be surprised. Facebook does not always do a 100% top job of spending your money in the correct places. So it is really, really important, even though Facebook is doing its best to try and push advertisers to these advantage push campaigns and take all the control away from the advertiser and give it to Facebook, it's because most people don't know how to advertise. Most people focus on the vanity metrics. Facebook just wants to get people those vanity metrics so they continue to pour more and more money into their ad accounts when in reality, a good marketer will try and retain as much control of that as possible because they'll understand how to read where the interest is coming from and then how to single those interests out um, and make sure your money is spent in 100% of the right place. Thanks for watching, guys. Before you go, I just want to invite you to check out my real dropshipping community. In my opinion, the best community you could ever hope to be part of if you are serious about dropshipping, just purely because I take all of the fluff, all of the bullshit out of dropshipping and just tell you what it truly takes um, to run a successful dropshipping business. It includes one-to-one -one mentorship pieces such as unlimited feedback advice. I answer everybody's questions. I give you feedback video feedback on what those are, unlimited store reviews, unlimited ad reviews for a fraction of what mentorships cost. <clears throat> when I started dropshipping, I did not have hundreds and thousands of dollars to invest into mentorships. This is why I created this community for those people who are on a shoestring budget, but still need that one-to-one -one advice. The Real Dropshipping Community is where you'll get that. So check out the links in the video description below. It comes with a free seven-day trial, so you literally got nothing to lose. Thanks.